Conservation Officer John Demler's first case of the day is a bird in distress. Hi, Matt. How are you? I'm doing okay today. So we have, it looks like a box. Yep. That is uh, in our garage. I think it may be injured, and that's why it can't get out. Hopefully it just is in there, and I can shoo it out of there, and it flies away. If not, there's a bunch of rehabilitators that I'm sure would be happy to try and rehabilitate it if there's an no, injury. Yep. Henry, thanks so much. Okay. See you soon. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye. Right. Just up in the window. Is he? Yeah. Did he try and get out? No. Okay. Yeah. He's on the... See him? Yeah, it's a little guy. Yeah. And the doors have been open for the a day or something? All night. And then, you know, all the windows, but you can't really open the windows. Definitely, I wanted to make sure the bird was okay. At the same time, you know, they can be pretty large and powerful. They've got sharp talons and a powerful beak as well. But I've got some really thick gloves, so hopefully we're able to get a hold of this hawk pretty easily. It already moved, huh? Oh, hey, buddy, you gotta go. You can't hang out in here. It's difficult for me to determine if it actually has an injury or if it just couldn't get out. Um, so maybe just try and get the hawk to leave the garage instead of trying to capture it for rehabilitation. Pretty hot, there's no real uh, cooling system in there. There's no fans running. So the higher up you get, more of the heat's trapped inside. At this point, he's probably really stressed and really hot. Um, he might not have that much energy left. Okay, let's go. It's starting to get its wings out in a cooling kind of posture. I'm worried it might start actually overheating. If Demler can't get the hawk out of the garage soon, the hawk may suffer heat exhaustion and die. I was pretty surprised to be able to use the catch pole as a perch for the hawk and lower it down to the uh, ground floor of the garage. Now that he's down there, obviously I'm worried that he's gonna fly up and get upset with me, but uh, I think now that he's on the ground, I might be able to get him outside right through the garage door. I'll call the rehabber and just see what her recommendations are. Hey, Maria, so uh, I actually, it was pretty docile. I think it's getting really hot in there. So I have it in a carrier. I don't know if it's just stressed and overheating because he's spread out and got his wings all out. Yeah, OK. It doesn't look like it's injured to me. The rehabilitator, she said that he's probably just stressed and really overheated at this point. So uh, the best bet's just try and get him out somewhere in the shade and let him get out and cool down. Hopefully he'll fly away. Kind of let him sit here for a minute, hopefully cool off. I guess we'll give him a little space. I'm uh, pretty surprised at how this all turned out. I wasn't expecting for the hawk to be so docile. I guess just how hot it was inside, it, it probably just didn't have any fight left in it. But all in all, I'm really glad that it worked out this way. It doesn't seem like the hawk is injured. It's flying. It's going to be OK. Michael Madsen. Thank you, Graham. What's going on, man? Not too much, buddy. Officer Graham Courtney receives a call from Officer Matson, who is patrolling a neighboring district. Yeah, I could use your help. You're stuck in the flood. All right, Matt. I'm heading your way. All right, thanks, man. I'll see you. All right, Mike. I haven't uh, responded to something like that down here. We've had some livestock and horses stuck in mud, but uh, deer is going to be a first, so it should be interesting to say the least, and hopefully we get there in time uh, to help the animal out where it hasn't received too much stress. It's 85 degrees right now, so I think it's pretty important we get to this deer quickly and get it out of this tough spot so that the heat and the stress don't get to it. Good afternoon, sir. So, I don't know if it's been hit, and now it's laying in there, and it's not able to That's move. That's what I was trying to but say. But it's in the water, so I'm just going to drive down here. You can follow yeah, me. Okay. Oh, yeah. 
I asked Graham Courtney to come up here and help me out. It, this isn't a one-person job uh, for no other reason than uh, if this deer kicks me and hurts me real bad, I want somebody else there. These animals shouldn't be uh, taken lightly. They're very strong. This is a full-grown doe that we're talking about, and um, I don't want to get hurt. I don't want Graham to get hurt, and uh, working together, I think we can get this deer out uh, effectively and safely. So she's right here. The way she's laying, she may have been hit. She may have kind of done a jump and landed in there and gone off her feet and then couldn't get her feet back underneath her. Oh, well, we might be able to just push her out just like that. Yeah. Oh, hang on, Graham. Unfortunately, the amount of stress it's under right now, trying to sedate it, would likely kill it. So we're going to try to muscle it out, see if we can uh, get it out of there and get it on its way. Yeah. I know. It's OK, girl. Yeah, I see some abrasion on this side, Mike. Looks like a little oh, road geez, rash. Oh, jeez, yeah. I see a lot of it over here. A little blood coming out of the mouth. Ah, oh, what a bummer. I don't want to just put her down and say she ain't got a chance just yet. OK. This deer's got uh, some visible trauma. It could have been a road hit um, just because of the vicinity to the road. But without knowing, I'm willing to give this deer a chance, see if we can muscle it out and uh, Better evaluate it. See right here? Yeah, yeah, but see that log? It's been rubbing up against that. Oh, it's trying okay. to get out. I'm just gonna, maybe she doesn't bite me. Let's just get her on her side and check this leg here. There you go, honey. How's that leg? Not bad. I'm feeling nothing in the front shoulder here. All right, I wonder if she was just stuck in the mud here. Let's get her up there if we can. Two, three, go. You know, we checked all four legs, no broken legs, uh, movement in all four legs. So we're hopeful. It's real hot, a uh, pretty easy day to get stressed out for a deer that maybe have just been stuck. So we're hoping for the best. It looks good right now. I mean, she, that rub is from that log. Yeah. She may just be exhausted. I don't know. No, I think give her a fighting chance, you know? Let's let her rest. Now that she's out of the mud, I'll check up on her in a little bit. Yeah go from there. Part of being a conservation officer is to conserve wildlife. Sometimes euthanization is uh, the ethical thing to do. In this situation, I'm going to err on the side of life and give her a fighting chance. And if she's able to pull through, uh, that's going to be great for wildlife in New Hampshire. Thanks, Graham. I really appreciate it. No, that worked out well. I'm glad you came. Who's better at dragging deer than me and you? <laughs> Nobody I know.